Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Atom RPG with me, Bring It Don. So I fiddled with that safe for about 10 minutes off camera until I remembered that you get the code as a reward for a quest. Technically for a quest that we already have. Uh, the repair, the... where's it at? Yeah, for the village mechanic. I'm not going to worry about that yet. I'm actually, this episode I'm planning on trying to either get companions or set up to get companions. Uh, there are, I guess, six companions in the game. Uh, you can have up to five of them at any one time. Uh, one of them is supposed to be a temporary companion. Uh, because you only have her until you turn in the quest, because she's the quest objective. Uh, but you can keep her for as long as you want, and she works just like the other companions. And then there's... Another one of the companions that I think makes either two or three of your companions leave your party. Okay, this is not the encounter that I want. Uh, you've been ambushed by the members of some murderous doomsday cult. If you don't do anything, they will surely attack you. Uh, we're going to attack. Get some free experience. I might level up off this, this encounter. So these random encounters, they will scale up with your level. Uh, the cultists are like the bottom tier. I need to move towards that guy. So that's what I'm going to do because he has a gun. Well, he probably doesn't have that much ammunition for it. So I'm just going to go after this guy. So anyway, uh, one of the companions is really easy to get. You just have to go and talk to him and he'll come with you. Uh, another one requires a little bit of combat. It's pretty challenging early on, so we might not be able to get him yet. Uh, but you have to go and trigger a quest in order to get him. And then the... I don't remember how many I mentioned. Uh, one of them is based off a random encounter. I just grab all this stuff, right? Yeah, I have plenty of carry weight. And uh, that one, I might try to wait till next episode to try and trigger, uh, because... Let's make some canned food. Just to heal up real fast. Darn it, I lost track of the companions. Alright, so there's the the one that makes you lose other companions that you can recruit. There's the one for the quest that's supposed to be temporary, but you can keep. Uh, one of them is a random encounter that requires 40 survival, which if you remember back at character creation, I made sure that I had 40 survival. I think that if you increase that up to 80, it increases the chance of triggering it, but that's as high as you can go. So there's more cultists down here. Okay. Oh, wow. That hurt. Um, I'm about to die. I need to make them come to me, I think. Holy crap. I don't know that I can win this. I don't know that I saved before I came down here. Yep, now I'm dead. Well, there you go. There's a uh, combat for you. Shoot. When I triggered combat, they got to go first. So I, this, I'll try one more time. But I don't really have a, a way to fight these guys. Because they have the range advantage. Uh, let's see. And they don't seem like they want to miss.
Nope, yep. We're not going to win this fight. I'm just going to pull back. It's a random encounter, so we can always run across this again. Um, there's no way for me to, to do that right now. It's always worth exploring the random encounters because you can run across events like that. And also, sometimes there's other loot laying around, I think. So it's always worth taking a quick look around. Darn it, I think I lost track of the companions again. Um, anyway, one of them is really easy to recruit. You just go and you talk to him, he'll come with you. Uh, the next one requires you to trigger another quest, and you get him during that quest. And then the last one requires both time and money, uh, but it's also related to the quest of the uh, companion that you get by triggering the other quest. Alright, so right here... I'm going to try and trigger a random encounter. Just by walking around real quick. Oh darn it. Alright. You see a small group of friendly junk scavengers? Meet the scavengers. Now scavengers, unlike merchants, you can kill. Uh, merchants you don't want to kill. Because they usually have a bunch of uh, very well equipped guards with them. And I think you. It also creates bad relations with other merchants, if I'm not mistaken. But scavengers are independent. And you can kill scavengers without any sort of uh, repercussion. It doesn't look like there's any loot around, but I'm going to check anyway. There's only two of them, so if I wanted to, I could probably take these guys if they have anything worth taking. Uh, they don't really have anything worth taking. What I'll probably do is just trade him. Right, before you stands a man in a pre-war jacket, sporting a gas mask. He holds onto the straps of his huge rucksack with one hand, while playing with a rusty bolt in the other. His voice is distorted by the mask. What are you doing here? If you have anything to sell, do it. If not, get out. Now, who are you people? We're the garbage collectors, claiming the ruins and what's inside them. We're sort of like this big cultural phenomenon of the modern times. Or at least that's what I heard. Have you heard anything new? They say demon boy scouts settled in some old camp far from here. I don't believe the superstitious crap. They're probably just highly intelligent humanoid mutants. Well, I see. Let's talk some more. Well, I better go. So I could fight them for experience, and I'm pretty close to leveling up. I would level up if I killed these guys. I'm not going to. I'm going to try and trigger one more random encounter, and then we'll head to Krasno. Where I only intend to talk to three NPCs. And then we'll speak to the rest of the NPCs in Krasno at a later date, when I'm ready to actually do the questing around Krasno. So that's the abandoned factory. That's where we gotta go for the quest for uh, Comrade Kovalev. Darn it, okay. Uh, you see a trading caravan. Do you wanna stop and trade? Yeah, we'll go look at their wares. Sometimes there's other stuff laying around. Let's take a look around the map. It's actually a pretty small map. Okay. Which one are you? Oh, this guy's the merchant. How oh, do you have anything worth buying? Doesn't look like it. A lot of rubles, though. So let's take his money. Um, hold on, 1 to 14, 1 to 13. Chance to poison. Chance to ignore armor. Let's use skin animals. Yeah, this has a chance to break, so I'm going to get rid of that. Get rid of the zip gun. Don't need 
these. I can plant these in Ultra Noye, I think. Get rid of that. It's 187, that's more than he has. Does he have anything else worth grabbing? Still short 20, anything worth 20? I guess one of these. That's fine. I'll I'll lose uh, three ruble value, but that's not a big deal. You see a large man smoking a huge cigar. He blows the smoke in your direction while spitting on the ground. Judging by his mannerism, he is the head of the caravan. Hey you, yeah you. You want to buy something, or you want something to buy? Okay. Well, anyway, uh, maybe I do. Show me the stuff. We've already done that, so let us leave. All right, let's head to Krasno. We'll grab a companion. Uh, because companions in this game do not gain experience when they're not in your party. Uh, they have to be... Oh, that's a long walk. It'll be worth it. Uh, they don't gain experience when they're not in your party, so they have to be with you in order to gain the experience. So the earlier you get them, the better. All right, another caravaner. It's always worth checking them out to see what they have in stock. Oh, you see a tall man wearing shades. His unshaven face is adorned with a wide smile. From the looks of him and his tough looking companions, he's a traitor. He stinks of cheap tobacco and beer. Hey man, you buying? I swear you won't find better prices. Also, yeah, the caravans with vehicles can give you a lift to a town. Oh, hey, listen. Where are you heading right now? Maybe you could give me a lift. You're a nosy one, ain't you? Okay, fine. We're heading to Ultra Noye. If you're going the same way, we can drive you there. But only for 10 rubles. Hope that you understand that fuel costs a lot of money nowadays. Nah, I'm going the other way. Show me your wares, then. So right now, my priorities are looking for... Uh, backpacks and armor. Though armor I can oftentimes find, so it's not that big of a deal. Uh, what else? The tinfoil hat is the faithful companion of any serious conspiracy theorist. Grants plus five defense against the microwave mind reading effect. We'll sell that. Shouldn't need that. Don't need toilet paper. Let's see. That's 52. Uh, nails I can use to make something decent. I don't know if I can make it with the crafting love, uh, skill that I have. But I'm going to hold on to it just in case. And throwing knives. Those might be new. Uh, perfume is very useful. It allows you to boost your personality. And it stacks with other personality boosting effects, but it has to be a unique one each time. So you need like perfume and cologne. Uh, perfume is only used for women, though. Okay, I think I'm just going to take his money. Alright, so it's going to take us a little while to get to Krasno. Uh, it's going to be quite the, the jaunt. Well, it's not too far. The map isn't crazy big. As you can see, that's that's the map. Also, I'm pretty sure there was... Now, you stumbled upon a strange symbiosis of rats and mutated wasps. If you do anything, if you won't do anything, they will surely attack. Well, I may as well try and level up real fast. Let them come to me. Yeah, we'll definitely level up off this uh, encounter.
Alright, I should be able to kill. There we go, two of them. The next turn I'll kill one of them. Pretty sure the rats are the bigger threat. So that's all I'll focus. Next turn I should be able to take out both wasps, and then it's just the rat left, and Well, let's take out the Oh, he's not dead. My mistake. And we leveled up. Fantastic. It's really gonna make me get through each one of these guys individually. That's a little tedious. In all honesty, it's probably another NPC in Krasna that I'd want to talk to that I can start turning these wasp flakes into. I can see buys them off of you. I say about getting my melee weapons up to 100, but I think I'm just going to get it up to 90 for now. Get my speech craft up by 10. And then I don't have enough points to uh, purchase my next perk. Which I think I'm going to do Armor of God so I can get the uh, Swindler, plus 20% to carry weight after that. So, one more level up to go. I didn't check the... shoot. I didn't check out the map to see if there was a building or anything nearby. Okay, 324 experience for that encounter. Just for fighting a bunch of bugs. I took, what, four damage in exchange? I think this cutscene is new. I don't remember this. Okay, Krasno is the city in the game. Uh, there's a lot of people to talk to here. Again, I'm only going to try and talk to three. The companion that I plan on recruiting, the gate guard, and then the guy that triggers the quest to recruit the next companion. Oops. But there's a lot to do here. I just need to remember that I'm not exploring anything. We're just going to... Oops. We're just going to this bar. Here he is. I don't know if I get this stuff when he comes with me. A strong man wearing a Central Asian cap is standing before you. He's pensively stroking a small, neat beard, and watching the bar patrons closely. He nods in your direction. Saludo! Welcome to my bar. My name is Fidel. How can I help you, amigo? Is Fidel your real name? The man smiles and shakes his head. Of course not. My real name is Agdavtilatov uh, Iskander Atugin Abzaldinovich Jr. But you can call me Fidel. I won't mind. Sorry if I completely butchered that pronunciation. Now, why Fidel exactly? I've dreamt of visiting Cuba since I was little. The Freedom Island. Perhaps you've heard of it. For obvious reasons, the stream died 20 years ago. But the nickname stuck somehow. I see. Let's change the subject. Now, what else would you like, amigo? Uh, pour me something to drink. With pleasure, amigo. What would you like? We've got specialty cocktails, and we also have the classics. Beer and moonshine. But I warn you in advance. The cocktails we only sell for currency. Now let's try one of the classics. Show me the menu. Okay. Hmm. I've changed my mind. Let's talk about something else. I can ask you various questions. Fidel sighs after scanning the hall again turns to you. Now what are you interested in, amigo? Now tell me about yourself, friend. Fidel smiles and quickly answers. So quickly, it seems he knows the answer by heart. I myself am from the north, amigo. Came to Krasno around five years ago and very soon after set up my bar here. I'd already put the money away, and good people helped me build it. Now I live and work here full time. I see. Can I ask another question? 
Fidel shrugs and nods in agreement. My house business. Get a lot of customers? I've got nothing to complain about, amigo. Krasno is a big city. Plenty of people living here and travelers pass through every day. My establishment is not the fanciest, of course, but there is something special about it. People are immediately attracted to its Cuban charm. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, what can you tell me about the city? Krasno is a city of sharp knives and even sharper tongues. I advise you to be on your guard and beware of, and beware of the tongues even more than the knives. Well, thanks for the advice, amigo. Uh, do you know any rumors circulating around here? Uh, travelers from faraway lands say that by winter we should expect a deficit in raw fabric. But you, amigo, will probably be more interested to hear there's more th that there's a new monster in the wastes, the so-called skinworm. I don't know whether the stories about it are true or not, and I'm hoping never to find out. Uh, who'd have thought? Uh, say the password. You clear your throat, and leaning close to Fidel, whisper, Treason is the highest form of sensibility. A traitor means a real man. The barman ever so slightly flinches, but otherwise does nothing to give himself away. Nonchalantly, picking up a glass from the counter, he examines it for stains and answers. But it's better to die a traitor than live a slave. He gestures to a short lad running to and fro in the main hall of the bar. Kostya, you're in charge. Our friend and I need to talk. And you, follow me. Got it. Fidel cautiously peeps behind the drapes and casts an apprehensive look around the bar. Having made sure no one is doing anything suspicious, he turns to you with his hand outstretched. The coast is clear, amigo. No eavesdroppers. He gives your hand a firm shake. As I told you before, call me Fidel. With whom do I have the honor of speaking? Hey, good day, Fidel. My name is... Fidel is listening attentively. Those watchful eyes are sliding down your figure. Apparently the agent is studying your ways. I call me Donnie. The man looks you in the eye and not slowly nods. Yes, you're telling the truth, Donnie. I understand you hear about the lost expedition of General Morozov. I'm afraid I have to disappoint you, as I myself know nothing about it. Although perhaps you've already managed to find something out. I'll tell him everything you know. Now, Fidel listens attentively. He doesn't interrupt, uh, nor offer his own comments. When you're finished, he removes his hat and pensively runs the palm of his hand over his bald scalp. Yes. The only thing clear is that nothing's clear. Hmm. Yes, it's all rather tricky. So it is. All right, we need to examine this issue thoroughly and figure out what's going on, while also getting in character and running errands for the locals. Uh, the main thing is to avoid raising their suspicions. Wait, did you say we? Fidel gestures theatrically. I'm coming with you, amigo. Together we have a much bigger chance of finding things out. Besides, I'm sick of this work. I'm a man of action, a man of adventure. Here I'm tied down to petty spying in some watering home. Uh, who's going to look after the premises? Fidel dismissively waves his hand. My student Kostya. He's a bit of a scaredy cat, but he's got a good head on his shoulders. He won't lose the bar. Alright, Fidel. Let's hit the road then. Perfecto. Just let me get my belongings. Right. Gather as much stuff as you can. Alright, so we now have Fidel in our party. His stats aren't anything to write home about. But he's got some points in technology, so his focus will be on... Oh wow, his melee is higher than his pistols. But yeah, he's going to be focused on pistols. Each one of my companions I'm going to have focused on a different um, weapon type. It used to be that automatic firearms were the most OP. They might still be the most overpowered uh, weapon type, but they've nerfed it since then. Um, but I like to have a variety of weapon types for my uh, companions. So he's going to focus on pistols and SMGs and technology. All right, he has points, so let's go ahead and give him plus 10 to pistols and SMGs, I think. Uh, they have the same skill tree as we do, uh, all the companions, except for the, except for one of them, which we'll get to a little later. I don't know if they get mad if I take these. Yep, nope. They don't like that. Let's reload. Don't want to make anybody mad. And then we have to go to the gate guard. Okay, I don't know if she disappears if I don't talk to her now. I'm going to assume not. We'll just avoid her for now. That's an ongoing, kind of a running gag. Uh, quest. 
you see a tall, strong man in heavy armor and a Ushanka hat. He turns to you while simultaneously grabbing an automatic rifle hanging from his neck. Well, well, well. The entrance to the city costs 30 rubles. It's a fee. Now, uh, where does this fee come from? Who came up with charging people for the entrance? Who, who? Our bosses, that's who. Surely you don't think that any street rat can freely walk into our city. The guard gives you an angry look. Suddenly he blinks as if having noticed something important about you. His eyes suddenly widen as he quickly steps back from you. He looks genuinely, or at least seems so, terrified. Oh, oh my, oh my. How come I didn't notice it straight away? You have Krasnov syndrome. No way. I can't let a sick man into the city. Epidemic is the last thing we need. A uh, first aid. Maybe you're also infected. Let me see. You're leaning towards the guard to check his pulse, trying to look like you know what you're doing. However, it's obvious that your act isn't fooling anyone. The guard just grins and stops you by lifting the barrel of his rifle. No way, bro. Don't try to bullcrap me. The sick person isn't the one to diagnose the healthy one. It'd be good for you to get some help from the city hospital, but I can't let you in just like that. The man pretends to think really hard, then a mischievous grin appears on his weather-beaten face. Oh, I do have a kind heart. I will let you pass, but for a thousand rubles. Are you for real? Uh, where would I have this much money from? It's obvious that the guard isn't taking your words seriously. A mocking expression appears on his face. Well, isn't that a great question? I don't know, but I feel like you of all people should be able to make this kind of money. You need to get to the city, right? Of course you do. I'll be honest with you. Right now, even killing a man costs less. Ugh, gosh darn it. I don't want to spend a thousand rubles to get in. I don't have a way to boost my personality right now. Or my speechcraft. Shoot. Well, that puts a damper in my plans. Maybe I should have put all my skill points into, uh... I wonder if I should have just paid the 30. When did I last save? Okay, you know what's back here. Let's see if we can just pay the 30 and get inside. So I have plans, and they involve... Oh yeah, I didn't check out uh, Fidel's inventory. They've updated this, which makes it a lot easier to... Uh... Oh, he doesn't have anything. Let's give him a weapon. At the very least. I don't mind having the backpack myself. Alright, 30. Well, that's not too bad. Oh, come on now. Alright, well, we're not doing this yet. I'm gonna boost my speechcraft before I come back here. So I do not want to pay a thousand rubles to get inside the city. It's not, it's not worth it. So, we're gonna go try and trigger Zulbaris one more time. If we don't, or if we can't, then we'll, uh... Just do the Abandoned Factory quest line next. Oh, that's so frustrating. <laughs> Alright, we're not gonna get a lot done this episode. Well, we leveled up, I guess. I'm pretty sure this is an, a, uh, an area, but maybe because we circled around the back, we didn't discover it. Might be further south. Oh, this is the... Uh, hmm. Oh, this is a pretty... Okay, I remember this encounter. You know, there's three wanderers standing around a campfire. You'd like to stop and have a talk with them. Let's check it out. This is a unique encounter. You see a tired man of about 30 with a lacerated face. In his strong calloused hands he holds an old rifle. The barrel is not aimed at anyone in particular, but wanders from side to side, as if ready to settle one of his companions at any second. Seeing you, the man lifts his weapon. Oh wow, another one joins the party. It's not in your best interest to spook me, man. I could shoot you where you stand. Well calm down, I just wanted to ask some questions. 
Oh, well, ask away. Uh, who are you, even? Ivan Contrative, of Ze Sevalod's bodyguard? Who Sevalod, you ask? The disco dancer looking guy over there. But I'll be at his side for long. In the near future, I'll probably become a gun for hire, because the crap I got into today tasted pretty sour. I see. Can I ask another question? Uh, what are you all standing around here for? Or standing here for? We're standing here because I said to stand here. I'm not leaving this place until I know what's what. We were going to Krasno, me, those two guys, and the driver. First day turned out okay. Ash at point of the day. He is our he is our god. Boris drove fine like always, him knowing his UAZ so good. We spent the night at old lady Nadia's cabin. She's a great old crone, you know, even though she's crazy about cats. She told us a story about a new kind of mutant haunting the local swamp, the leather worm. It's one hell of a beast. Looks like a thin snake or a large worm. If one of these critters sneaks into your ear into the skull, or through your ear into the skull, it's the end of you. He'll possess your brain, and your whole body will be his. And he'll do it so well, no one can tell the difference. The biggest clue would be this. The possessed person begins to mix up names, and to forget small events from the past. Oh, another thing. The possessed human turns into a cannibal. That's a sciencey word for man-eater. That's the story old Nadia has told us. The next day we got into a car crash. It rained a few days ago, so the road got all mushy. Looked like gravel, but it was slippery as heck, so we drove off the road, and found ourselves in the middle of the same swamp the old crone told us about. And that's not even the worst worst of it. We got separated trying to get out of there. Boris sank, I fell, Ashet ran off somewhere, and Cephalod was doing God knows what outside anyone's view for ten minutes or so. As a result, I don't trust those two no more. Who knows? Maybe one of them is possessed by the leather worm. Uh, creepy. Can I help somehow? He looks at you. Yeah, he looks at you suspiciously. How can you help me out? If one of them is possessed, he'll never show it. Not until you turn your back on him, at least. I can try and talk with the others to search for clues. Uh, howdy. Can I ask you something? Uh, let's see. Got any good rumors to share? I'll give you a rumor about from the near future. There's this guy near the swamp named Ivan who shot his guide and his boss because he believed they were dangerous mutants. Hope to God it won't come to this, but right now I feel like it's the only way. Oh, he has a whole grenade. It's dangerous. I see a nervous looking black haired fellow of about 20. He's hugging himself, nervously glancing at his companions and at you. What an unlucky situation. Darn it. Hey, can I ask you about stuff? Just be careful about it. Uh, tell me about yourself. I'm Ashet Kasparov. I'm a guide for those two, you dig? I know the local we the locale well, so I agreed to lead them to Krasno. There are actually three of in the beginning, but now I doubt they are even the same people that hired me. That's how it is. Right, well, I'll have a follow-up question. The man throws his companions a suspicious look, then nods it to you. Uh, why the vigil, if it's not a secret? Uh, what else can I do? I won't go with them, that's for sure. They hired me to guide their car to Krasno. Everything was going well at first. The driver drove, I navigated. We spent the night at old lady Zena's dilapidated gas station. She's quite the woman you know, and she has a funny dog named Toby. When the morning the rain started, a real downpour. The driver couldn't handle the vehicle, smashed into some tree and we plunged right into the swamp. Barely made it out alive. One more minute and we'd have sunk to the bottom with the UAZ, along with the poor driver. When we finally got out, we suddenly knew where we were, in the skinworm swamp. A skinworm is this mutant critter that crawls inside of people through their mouths and starts controlling their bodies, you dig? And it's so good nobody can tell the difference, until it's too late. So it leads you to some deserted place and starts eating your darn meat. So I ran from the swamp, but these two didn't go with me. They got lost or something. We regrouped when we all got out of the swamp, but how do I know the skinworm didn't get them? How can I guide them to the city if they might strangle me as soon as I turn my back? Now that's quite the tale. Can I help you out? A tiny bit of hope sparks in the man's eyes. You really want to help? That's good. That's very good. But, you'll be, but will you be able to? Or human shows little to no difference from a person controlled by this mutant. They fully copy the original. They may mix up some memories occasionally, or forget some names and other little details. But that's it. I can try and talk with the others to search for clues. Have you heard anything interesting lately? Have I heard anything? Have I? 
I heard too much, but those darn mutants that are everywhere. Beasts from old folk tales. Everywhere they are. Make themselves look like trees or animals or people. All just to kill one of us. Alright, sad really. Well, I better go. <sighs> Rado, that's pretty good. You see a serious looking, clean shaven, middle aged man with an almost concealed bald spot and a neatly trimmed mustache. He's dressed in a brown suit, red shirt, and patent leather shoes. His surprisingly rich outfit is complemented by gilt framed eyeglasses and a metallic chain around his fat neck. The man looks at you angrily. He's obviously very tense about something. Hey you pleb, are you a local? Spill the beans. I don't have a lot of patience right now thanks to these two nitwits. Uh, nope, sorry. I'm just passing by. The man lets out a disappointed gasp. Darn it, crap. How much longer should I sit here? With these two nut jobs of all people. The man glances hatefully at his companions. Ah, screw my life. Can I ask you a few questions? Ask away. What else is there to do but talk? Uh, who are you? The man looks surprised, but then shakes his head as if remembering that no one uh, here knows him. Uh, Sevalod Markalev is my name. Trade is my game. I'm the famous owner of the Markalev and Son Cooperative. What, you never heard of us? Unfreaking believable. What is this crap hole? Stay silent. The man looks angrily at a point somewhere in the horizon and exhales sadly. Uh, tell me about yourself. I thought I told you already. I'm Sevalod Markalev. A Markalov, a businessman extraordinaire. Oh, don't spit. Uh, so what happened here? Uh, let's ask about rumors first. Uh, what rumors have you heard lately? The man chuckles to himself. I heard that Sioma Voronok is, is, is serious about taking over the Sokolovsky cloth factory. Thing is, nobody will work for the bastard. So you better stock up on cloth. There's going to be a shortage until winter. What, you never heard about the factory and you don't care? That's because I'm not from around here. Local rumors are the last thing on my mind. That was informative. Can I ask something else? Uh, so what happened here? The man looks vexed. I, a wealthy intelligent man, got stuck here with these two chimps. That's what happened here. I was invited to Krasno to have a talk with the Chamber of Commerce. So I tried to grow my business in any way possible. I took the offer without a second thought. I dressed in my best outfit, packed up samples of my wares, hired a guide, and brought along my best card. I thought he was my best anyway, and got Boris behind the wheel. Though we ended up in this rotten corner of the wastes. Uh, then what? After that, there was the road, or should I say the lack thereof. Nothing our UAZ couldn't handle, though, at least in the beginning. It was a jolly ride. Local plebs couldn't have caught up to us if they tried. It was quite nice, actually, sitting in a warm car, looking at the trees passing by. When we came, we stayed at old Lady Valia's house. Now, she's a good old gal, you know. She lives alone with her cat, Petka, and doesn't fear anything. Real queen of her ruined gas station. But this time, she didn't just feed us and put us to bed. She told us a story about the skinworm. How it targets people traveling alone, how it drives them mad and destroys their companions, and ultimately devours them. What kind of a beast is this skinworm? There is no such beast. The whole idea is moronic. An old wives tale. Proletarian folklore. Made up by people who trade with old Valia. Anyway, the legend goes that there is a mutant in the local swamp. If you walk there alone, it falls down from a branch and crawls inside your mouth. Once it's inside you, it connects to your nervous system, destroys your personality, and switches it to its own. Then your body becomes a sort of doll, controlled by the worm from the inside. But you don't look any different, and nobody even ever notices the change. There's only one major difference. The worm has trouble with your memories. He'll mix up names and locations. Things like that. And do you know why he takes people over? To lure re real humans into a trap and feast on their flesh. Only human flesh is nutritious to the worm, they say. But it's all bullcrap. Moronic bullcrap. Uh, you don't say. What happened next? The man's face fills with deep torment. We continued our drive in the morning. Uh, we'd have been in Krasno by noon if not for the accursed fog. It's like driving through cotton batting. My Boris was an ace driver, but he couldn't see for squat and crashed into a tree. That's how we all ended up in the swamp. The tree, the samples, the car, and us inside. All into that stinking sinkhole. We, myself, Ivan the guard, and Kasparov the guide, were able to clamber out through the roof, but Boris struck his head on the windshield. He sank to the bottom with all of our stuff a few minutes later. 
The water kept bubbling for half an hour or so. Then what? The man sniffs. Then we saw we were in the same swamp from Valia's story. Kasparov ran uh, off straight away. That's what you get with locals. Just took off like a hair through the underbrush. Me and Ivan followed, but Ivan fell into a bush while I kept going. He got a leg cramp or something. In other words, the three of us separated for a while. Only, we only regrouped when we arrived here. Now right then would be a great time to look for some locals get help, right? Not according to those two. Kasparov, the friggin' savage, told us he won't move or show us the way anymore, because he can't guarantee some of us haven't been changed by the worm. And Ivan, who I trusted with my life, repeated the same bullcrap, saying, Sevalod, how can I be sure you're not infected by the worm? And I don't know about the guide either. Maybe you're both cannibals now. Maybe you're just waiting for your chance to knock me over the head and gnaw on my tender flanks. Now we're at, now we've got a dilemma. I'm gonna go find help to get my car out of the swamp, but I can't do that without a guide. And the guide's not going anywhere since he's afraid we'll eat him. My guard simply wants to abandon us as soon as his legs feel better. Meanwhile, he's threatening to shoot anyone who makes a move. I would have shot him myself, but I have no gun, and I pity the idiot. He served me faithfully for years, didn't he? Anyway, that's why we're here. Just sitting, waiting for this catastrophe to somehow work itself out. I can help you with your dilemma. A tiny flicker of hope lights in the back of the man's eyes. Really? Well... I spoke with all of you and came to a surprising conclusion. What kind of conclusion? All three of you are saying different things. I'm out of here. The man slowly turns his head to look you straight in the eye. There's something new in his glance now. Something you can't properly understand. Without saying a word, the man smiles and nods to you. Run if you're that afraid. Run while you still can. Um, I better go. So they are all infected. <laughs> Right, we're actually going to start combat with these guys. I'm going to take out the guy with the gun first. Shakes head violently, bits of skull flying left and right. Uh, we want him to get aggressive. So having him go after that guy because he has the grenade, and I'm afraid he's going to use it. I'm not worried about his punches. Yep, here's the grenade. And he killed everybody. Okay, but we're still alive. That's all that matters. Where'd this other body go? Alright, well that was quite the exciting little exchange, right? That's not the last time we'll hear about those worms. I don't think there's anything else here to do. Right, but the episode length went a little over. Um, I'm gonna... 19. 23. Alright, we're in okay shape. We'll probably camp when we... Well, hold on, no, there's a thing over here. Let's just cook some food. Alright, I'm actually going to call the episode here, since I've already gone over time. Off camera, I'm going to use this campfire to heal up and cook food. And then, off camera, I'm going to try and trigger that random encounter for the other companion. I don't plan on doing any combat encounters, I'll just reload if I run across a combat encounter. And, um, hopefully next episode will pick up in that random encounter, get our next companion. And then we'll start doing the abandoned factory quest, because I need to level up to improve my speech craft so I can make it past that guard without paying a thousand rubles, because I don't want to pay a thousand rubles to get inside Krasno. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's the plan right now. Anyway, thanks for watching, hope to see you guys in the next episode.